everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Summer for those who are new. Subscribe if you haven't already, it means so much to me. So today I'm going to be reviewing the Dyson Supersonic Pro Blow Dryer. I ordered my Supersonic on January 11th and I started using it in salon by the 13th. So I've been using it now for a total of three months. I decided to buy my Dyson Supersonic after one of my coworkers bought it and I tried it out on one of my clients who has extremely thick hair and I was so impressed. I got her hair fully dried and smoothed out in just about 17 to 18 minutes. And if I have my assistant help me dry her, together it takes us 15. So I was like, well I can't beat that time and I ordered mine that night. The Supersonic Pro retails for $449 and with my cosmetology license, they discounted it down and my total with tax was $320. Reasons why I got the Supersonic Pro was because the magnetic attachments they told me on the phone were supposed to be a little bit stronger. Um, the filter is supposed to be better for keeping stuff out of the motor versus the regular Supersonic as in salon we've got all kinds of products floating around in the air. The cord is 11 feet, which is truly so amazing, especially in salon. I feel like you never have enough cord length, so I do enjoy that. As they advertise, it's very lightweight. One thing I did notice though right away was the difference in how the weight is distributed. Because the motor is in the handle versus the back top of the dryer, it was just completely a different feeling than any dryer I've used in the past. I kind of felt like the bottom was almost like pulling at my hand, if that makes sense. And again, it's not that it's heavy, it's just a little weird at first because of the distribution being different from your standard blow dryer. With that being said though, it's something I don't notice now that I've been using it for three months, it just took some getting used to at first. The speed is pretty freaking awesome. They say their motor is on average six times faster than other dryers, and in their own words, they say it produces a high pressure, high velocity jet of controlled air. And I really love the choice of the word jet, not to be cheesy, but you truly, when you're rough drying without an attachment on, it is literally like a gust of wind coming out at you. I tried to get some footage of me using it on myself compared to another dryer for you to see how much power it has. With that being said though, I do want to mention, I feel like depending on what result you're wanting for your blow dry, you might need to lower your speed setting, um, especially when using the Pro Concentrator Nozzle. Personally, I feel like if you are wanting a blowout with a lot of movement and bounce in the hair, you need to drop the speed down um, to the medium setting over the highest setting. The highest one, it's great, but I mean, it is, it's freaking fast and at times I feel like I'm losing the bend in the hair a little bit when it's on high. Um, it's only 1600 watts, so it's very energy efficient. I haven't had any clients, I believe, complain about the heat ever getting too hot. Um, on its highest heat setting, it's only 212 degrees. The attachments that came with mine were the diffuser, the smoothing nozzle, and the professional concentrator and a non-slip heat mat. They do have two other attachments um, that you can purchase, which is a comb and a gentle air attachment, but I'm happy with the three that I have. I haven't used the diffuser attachment yet. Um, I've got no opinion on that. It's just not something I use in salon. The smoothing nozzle to me is just your standard nozzle. It's a little bit wider. I don't really agree with the choice of the word smoothing being used. Um, the Pro Concentrator is though by far my favorite. It's super narrow, so it allows you to have way more control in your blow dry to get that hair smooth and sleek. And I feel like when I use this concentrator over the smoothing nozzle, there is a lot more shine to the hair. And one thing to make note on the smoothing nozzle, it's just like the airflow, it's too much, and I feel like it just kind of disperses more so, and it doesn't really concentrate in on it to get it as smooth. That's why I prefer the Pro Concentrator. The dryer has three heat and three speed settings, as well as a cool shot button to set in your blow dry. I feel like all the heat settings are nice. I feel like I don't get, like I said, any complaints from clients that it's ever too hot. And I thoroughly enjoy all the speed settings as well. They're all a good amount of airflow coming out. 
All in all, I would say in my first few weeks of use and month in, I loved it. I only pretty much now use the Pro Concentrator nozzle on my clients as I feel I get the best results with that over the smoothing one. I love how quiet the Supersonic is versus other dryers and especially with mask life, any lower amount of noise is very helpful to be able to hear my clients. So while I do like it, I've in the last week or two kind of been feeling like, is it really as great as I thought? I was kind of feeling like it wasn't living up to the hype anymore. So I decided this past week while planning this review to pay attention a little bit more to my dry time when comparing it um, with my old dryer. So I used it the other day on one of my clients who, as you can see here, the amount of thickness she has. She is a solid one hour blow dry appointment. I spend a total of 45 to 15 minutes alone on just blow drying her hair. And I timed myself this last time with my Dyson and it took me under just 35 minutes to have her hair fully dried and ready to leave. I also did do a few sections of her hair with my old dryer, which is the Rapido from Babyless to compare the difference. And I did find that my Dyson took anywhere from 45 to 60 seconds of dry time off with the same size of a section that I would use with the Rapido. So if you add up that 45 to 60 seconds for your blow dryer, it adds up. If you're in salon and you've got five clients and you can save yourself almost an hour of dry time, Add another haircut to your day if you're paying attention to adjusting your book time. Paying attention to it more this past week, I would definitely say on average, it cuts my blow dry time by a solid 10 minutes per client. So that's a lot of time. Points I don't really love about it as far as insulin use goes. The first point would be the placement of the heat in speed settings. Most dryers, it's standard that they're on the inside of your handle that you can flip with your finger or on the outside that you can just move with your thumb that's easy to flip. On the Dyson, however, the speed and heat settings are both on the back and they're placed up higher. So it's not really as easy in my experience to change them. I kind of almost have to either change how I hold the dryer, the angle, which when the attachment's on, it doesn't really glide on the hair the same way. And I don't feel like I have as good of a grip on it. Um, so the way that I hold it when I'm most comfortable is this way. And I sort of kind of have to stop my motion, look at it, then change my settings and then go back on the hair. So it's just kind of weird. It's not as easily accessible. Um, Obviously, it's not affecting the dry time at all, but it's just something you have to get used to at first that I feel like for insulin use, it's not as easy as other dryers. My second point would be the shape of the dryer for insulin use. A lot of stations where you put your dryer is made up for universally what dryers have been shaped like for basically the test of time. And sure, some nozzles don't always fit in the hole, but because the dryer has a longer neck on it, you can remove the nozzle and it fits in well. Obviously this design, there is no neck on the dryer and for my setup at work, it's not really secure to just rest on its own. I can fit the smoothing nozzle through the hole while it's attached to the dryer, so I'm happy for that. Um, it has come disconnected once or twice. Um, luckily it never went crashing to its death, but it does leave me a little uneasy because it's just sort of resting like right on top of the hole. It's not in there solid by any means without the smoothing nozzle on. They do sell the stand, which I obviously have. Um, I just have to figure out where I'm going to put it because I have to reorganize my entire station to fit it in. The salon I work at, the owner did a little bit different of a station setup compared to like some other salons, but I can imagine that this is a problem or an annoyance that a lot of stylists might find with the Dyson versus your other hair dryers. My third and final point would be, I'm not really a huge fan of where the filter is. With the motor being in the handle, the filter's at the bottom, and I feel like I often just sometimes cover it a little bit with my hand, and I feel like it just, because it's smaller, gets covered easier um, than your standard dryer setup. They push for it to be cleaned when using for insulin use every day. Uh, every single day. They advise you to soak it for 30 minutes, 
brush out the filter and then reattach it to your dryer. You do get a second filter with the Pro, so you're not necessarily without one. And with the Pro, it does have an extra interior filter versus your standard supersonic, but I just feel like it's kind of a small filter. And if I'm being honest, I just don't want to clean it every day. I know that sounds lazy. I just, I don't want to do it. So I don't, I do it one to two times a week. I don't know if I'm cutting the life of my dryer short, but it's just something I don't feel like having to do every day is all. I would imagine I'm not in that boat alone either. To throw in a really quick fourth kind of con, I don't like where the cool shot button is placed. It's at the top of the handle and to like use it, you have to hold it down the whole time. So again, it's just not a natural flow of the way you hold your wrist. So if you're somebody who uses the cool shot all the time, I don't know that you're going to love the Dyson versus other dryers. So to summarize my pros and cons, my three pros for the dryer would number one, be at speed for sure. Like I said, it is so freaking fast, just a jet of air coming out at you. Um, with the dryer only being 1600 watts, they really went above and beyond with the speed and airflow to get the hair dry. And the speed is what makes it possible to shave off those minutes on your dry time. Number two for the pros is the magnetic attachments. I like them over your other ones. I feel like they stay in place better on the dryer rather than kind of sometimes I feel like other nozzles rotate when you're drying the hair. These, I never have that problem with them at all. Number three, kind of random, but clients always ask about the dryer and I feel like they're just impressed by the fact you have one. They're always like, you have the Dyson. So it's something small, but it's an easy thing to talk about with your clients. My cons. Number one would be just the shape of the dryer specifically for in salon use. With having no neck on it, it's not going to fit in your standard salon blow dry setup. I know, like I said, you can purchase the stand, which I have. It's just something you have to reorganize depending on your station setup to completely make room for. Number two con would be the placement of the heat and speed settings. They're not as easy to access as other dryers and the cool shot button, it really does just kill me. And like I said before, if you're a big cool shot stylist, you might honestly want to skip the dryer altogether. So I really though, with everything being said, do love the Dyson Supersonic. It is a good hair dryer. I'm glad I brought my old dryer back in the salon with me this week to compare a little bit, to remind myself of how I felt when I first bought it because I was starting to lose my first impression love I had for it. So I love the speed and time it saves me when drying. I still do go back and forth a little bit on whether or not I think it's the most ideally designed exterior for insulin use. I wish they would have spent a little bit more time and research on what setup works best for hairstylists in the the salon for a pro dryer. I know they obviously have the design to make it look different on purpose. I feel like that they could have just achieved that while still making it easier to access the settings for in salon use, um, just to flow easy with what we're accustomed to. But with all that being said, I love the dryer. Um, I apparently love it so much. I bought another one to keep here at home with me. So now it's my at home go-to dryer too as well. This I forgot to mention is the carrying case. If you're traveling, I haven't used the case. It's kind of big and bulky to be honest. It's not really easy to hold. So I've never used it, but you can get the case. Um, so that way, if you are traveling, you're not getting any scratches or anything like that on it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment below. If you have any questions, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and please subscribe if you haven't already. It means so much to me and I will see you guys soon.